Hi everyone and welcome back. Over our last couple of lessons we've learned how to sketch the graphs of multivariable functions z equals f of xy. The graph of such a function is some crazy curved surface living in R3. It turns out however that there are plenty of other surfaces in R3 that don't arise in this way. They're not the graphs of some multivariable function. Take for example this sphere in R3. A sphere is something we're definitely interested in studying as mathematicians, but it's not the graph of a function z equals f of x, y. After all, if you take some input from the domain, some pair x, y, it has two corresponding z values, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. So this is not the graph of a function. We've actually seen this before, back in Calc 1 and Calc 2. Take, for example, a circle. A circle is not the graph of a function y equals f of x, because after all, it fails the vertical line test. Nevertheless, if we're given this equation, we may still be interested in representing it graphically, which is exactly what we're going to do here with multivariable functions. The good news is that all of our usual techniques involving level curves and cross sections can still be applied when sketching these surfaces. We're going to be restricting our attention to what we call quadratic surfaces. These are polynomial expressions involving x, y, and z, where the highest power in the expression is no greater than 2, sort of like the equation of a circle. So that said, let's jump into some examples. For our first example, I'd like to sketch the quadratic surface defined by this equation, x squared plus y squared equals z squared plus 1. Notice that this equation is not of the form z equals f of x, y and there's no way to write it as such. Here, z is not a function of x and y. Nevertheless, this equation describes some curved surface living in R3, and we're going to graph it using the same techniques as before. We're going to slice up the surface at various heights by looking at the level curves. So to look at the level curves, we set z equal to k. That gives us the equation x squared plus y squared equals k squared plus 1. Ah, now hold on a second. That's the equation of a circle, right? A circle in the xy plane. I could rewrite the right-hand side as the square root of k squared plus 1 squared, so this circle is centered at the origin and has radius root k squared plus 1. So for example, if I slice my graph at a height of k equals 0, I'm going to get a circle of radius 1. Looks something like this. If instead I slice my graph at a height of k equals 1, I get a circle of radius root 2. Maybe it looks like this. Now notice that since k is squared, I would actually get the exact same circle at a height of negative 1. Right? When k is negative 1, I again get a circle of radius root 2. If I take, say, k equals 2, I'm going to get a circle of radius root 5. It gets a little bit larger and I would get the exact same circle for k equals minus 2. I think we get the idea. Let's see if we can raise these level curves up to build our frame and then connect them up to make our graph. So when I raise them up to build my exoskeleton, it might look something like this. And by connecting it all up, I get this thing that sort of looks like one of those cooling towers on a nuclear power plant, right? It's sort of um, like a cylinder, except it's wider at the top and bottom and a little bit narrow in the middle. Pretty cool, huh? Let's check out some of our other traces to make sure that we've sketched this thing correctly. All right, let's take a look at some of the vertical traces of our surface and see if we can identify them in our picture. We get the vertical traces by slicing in the x-axis or the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and slice in the x-axis, say. We're going to set x equal to k and take a look at the equation that results. We get k squared plus y squared equals z squared plus 1. Now this equation describes some conic section in the yz plane. And if I move things around, I can make it look a little bit more like something familiar. So I'll move the z squared over uh, to get y squared minus z squared. And then I'll move the k squared to the right to get 1 minus k squared. Ooh, now check it out. The y term has a positive coefficient, and the z term has a negative coefficient. This is the equation of a hyperbola. The equation of a hyperbola involving y and z looks something like this. 
y over a squared minus z over b squared is equal to 1. This is a hyperbola that opens in the direction of the y-axis. If instead the plus and minus signs were switched here, well then it would be a hyperbola opening in the direction of the z-axis. If you need a little refresher on this stuff, check out that conic sections file that's posted to learn. Okay, back to our equation. If I divide both sides of this expression by 1 minus k squared, I'm going to get y squared over 1 minus k squared minus z squared over 1 minus k squared equals 1. So let's take a look at what we have here. When 1 minus k squared is positive, that is, when k is between minus 1 and 1, well, this is a hyperbola that opens in the y direction, according to what we just discussed. So for small values of k, we get these hyperbolas opening in the y direction. When k becomes quite large, either in the positive or negative direction, however, 1 minus k squared is going to be negative. And when we divide by a negative number, this term is now going to be the negative one, and the z term is going to be the positive one. So for larger values of k, we're going to get a hyperbola opening in the z axis. Oh, now that's actually pretty neat, but can we see this in our picture? Well, if I slice this thing at some small x value, say at x equals 0, then you can imagine bringing a knife down right across the top here. What are we going to trace out? Well, I see a piece of a hyperbola over here and a piece of a hyperbola over here. This hyperbola is opening in the direction of the y-axis. If, however, I slice it at a larger x value, like say over here, well now we're going to cut two different pieces. We're going to cut a piece up here and we're going to cut a piece down here. Sure enough, we get a hyperbola opening in the z-axis. Pretty cool, huh? As an exercise, try to figure out what the traces in the y-axis look like. I have one more example for you on sketching quadratic surfaces in R3. For this example, I'd like to sketch the quadratic surface defined by this equation, x squared plus z squared is equal to 4. Now, we could start just like before by looking at the level curves, but in this case, I think the vertical traces might be a little bit more helpful. You see, there's no y present in this equation. So it might be interesting to ask ourselves, what do we get if we set y equal to k? Well, by setting y equal to k, we get exactly the same expression, x squared plus z squared equals 4. But this is meant to describe a 2D curve. In fact, in the xz plane, it describes a circle of radius 2. And it describes that circle for all values of k. It doesn't matter where you slice it. You're always going to get a circle in the xz plane of radius 2. Okay, how does this translate to the 3D setting? Well, no matter where I cut along the y-axis, I should have the exact same circle. What do you think we're going to get for a 3D graph? I think you got it. A cylinder. It's a cylinder extending in the y-direction of radius 2. How do you think this graph would change if our equation were x squared plus y squared is equal to 4? As an exercise, give it a try.